For our students today, Ms. Aarons and I are going to be talking about isotopes and how they are calculated. So we're going to first start off, this is a, a symbol from the periodic table, yep. and uh, we learned already that the atomic number is the whole number, so this is our atomic number. And that's going to give you the number of protons and electrons which are positive and negative. Protons are found in the nucleus, electrons are found in the orbitals, just to review. Then we have our number that is a decimal, and that is going to be our mass number. And this number is sometimes called the atomic weight or the okay. atomic mass, um, but for all intents and purposes, they all mean the same thing. Um, so, today what we're going to talk about is this number here. This is the important one that deals with isotopes because this um, is where the protons and the neutrons hang out. And isotopes deal with neutrons. So, today we're talking about isotopes and neutrons. Remember, neutrons are going to have no charge and they are also found in the nucleus. No charge. Not negative. Not negative. They have no charge, or we could also call them neutral. Okay, so what we see right here, uh, the form that is written out with uh, the mass number on top and the atomic number on bottom, this is how you would see it, um, like if it was in symbol form. Yeah, it's a symbol form. So um, up here, this tells us our mass number. And notice it's not a decimal because it's being rounded because when you are talking about number of neutrons, you can't have 0.6 of a neutron. Yep. Remember, mass of uh, protons and neutrons are normally one, and then electrons are a lot smaller, so that's why we add them together to get the mass. Correct. And so this number, that is the decimal, um, we typically round. So if it's below 4, we round down. If it's above 5 or above, we round up. So since this one is 12.011, this shows us that we have 12 of the... Um, neutron, or neutrons and protons, and then we have 6 protons, so 12 minus 6 equals 6. We have 6 neutrons altogether. Neutrons in carbon. For that isotope. And then you can see on the other one where we have carbon-14 there. Carbon-14 has an atomic mass of 14. That's going to be the mass. Mm -hmm. We still have the atomic number of 6. Because if you change the protons, then it would be a different element. Yep. So we still have six protons. So if we subtract the two, we would get eight. And that's going to be the number of neutrons for that particular isotope. So we change the number of, of neutrons, and we're going to get an isotope. So that's what the isotope definition is. It's the same element with a different number. of protons, or yeah. neutrons, excuse neutrons. me. Neutrons. Protons and electrons are going to stay the same. That's right. Just different number of neutrons. So carbon-14 has eight neutrons, where carbon-12 has six neutrons. Okay. Let's, um, for standard form, this is when we write it out. You're going to see a lot of times on tests and stuff, uh, the word written out and a number after it, mm -hmm. and that's called standard form. So if it's not in the symbol form, like we uh, just talked about with mass number on top, the atomic number on bottom, it would look like this. Uh, of course, you can write it out in symbol form from this, um, but this is always the atomic mass number. Okay, so um, we write out the word. So if we're doing copper, and then this is the new atomic mass. This is not the number of neutrons. Okay, this does not tell us neutrons. That is the mass. Okay, so um, always use the mass number. And this is the mass number. Now, if you look up at copper on the periodic table, copper does not have 63 um, as its mass number. It has 63.5. So if we were going to use the one on the periodic, periodic table, we would be using 64. 
but this is an isotope of carbon, so it has a different number of neutrons. So this number could really be anything. This could be copper 60, copper 62, copper 72. It could be really anything. So this is telling you your new mass number, okay, for the isotope, okay? So for standard form, we would write carbon out. And then we could write any number. So we could have a 16 here. Okay, and so if carbon 16, this is our new mass number, it would be 16 minus the atomic number, because we learned this equation already, so this is what we've been using to calculate neutrons so far. And since carbon has six, six <clears throat> protons, we know that there are 10 neutrons in this isotope of carbon. Okay, so if we do one for silicon, we write out the word silicon, um, and maybe it says that it is 32. So silicon 32, 32 is your new mass number, atomic mass, and subtract the number of protons, which would be 14. 14, so we have 4 extra than what the most abundant has, which is... 18. 18 total neutrons. Now, so let's just take a second to talk about what that decibel means. So when you look at the periodic table, we do see something like 0, 0, 1, 1. Okay? Now where does this decimal come from? It is the most abundant average. So that means that there is a whole bunch of carbon-12, then there might be some carbon-16, there might be some carbon-13, there might be some carbon-10. There's all these different varieties, but when you averaged all the ones that we have found on planet Earth since the beginning of the periodic table, it averages out to 12.001, meaning that the most abundant okay. one is going to be 12. So before, when we were just using this equation, here, we were calculating the number of neutrons for the most abundant isotope of carbon, or the most abundant isotope of copper. And so now, we are being specific. We are saying, I went in my backyard, I dug up an atom of copper, I looked at its neutrons, and this is my new mass number. Okay? So, um, go ahead and take a second and do out these four, just like we calculated neutrons for these. Okay, so isotope review. Isotopes are the same element with a different number of neutrons. We talked about that in the beginning of the video, but this is really important. The same element. It can't be a different element, and it always has to have a different number of neutrons. Remember, it's just a different number of neutrons. If we change the number of protons, it's going to make a whole new element. If we change the number of electrons, it's going to make an ion. So you have to remember that it's just the no, just the neutrons. That's all we're looking at changing for isotopes. Okay. Mass number on the periodic table is an average of all the isotopes known for each element. So there might be something on the periodic table that only has one isotope. Yep. And if you look on the periodic table, there is some that actually say parenthesis 226. And like that would be an example of radium, which is in the S block. Um, and he, there's only one isotope of radium, and so that's its average, because there's only one, okay? Um, interestingly enough, there's some that there might be an isotope of um, 72 and 74, but they're equal amounts, and so the actual isotope um, is 73. The most abundant one is 73, even though it doesn't exist. So um, that's kind of an interesting little fact. Um, again, carbon-12, this will be our most abundant one because this one's on the periodic table. That's another way you can tell if it's the most abundant one because it's on the periodic table. Correct. And um, one that is different, that has a different mass number than what's on the periodic table, is going to be something specific. We're talking about a certain type of isotope. And in this case, it has two extra neutrons if we calculated out the amounts. 
So let's do some more calculations here. Here's some more practice problems. You can go ahead and find the atomic number. We'll do the first one with you. Sure. So oxygen 16. So this is written in standard form. Yep. Okay. So oxygen for atomic number. Remember, this is the amount of protons and the amount of electrons because they're always equal. Okay. So this should be a little bit of a review. So we've already learned this. So the atomic number of oxygen is eight. eight. And remember, isotopes have nothing to do with protons or electrons. So um, if it's an isotope, it doesn't make any difference for the atomic number. Uh, the number of electrons is 8 because, again, it doesn't deal with electrons. Um, number of protons is 8 because it doesn't deal with protons. Now our mass number is going to change. Yep. And our mass number is 15.9994. On the periodic table. On the periodic table. However, this one has a new mass number. The standard form is right here. So our mass number in this case Would is going to be 16. So that's where you don't look at, if it's an isotope form, do not look at the periodic table. You need to write the new mass number. So that's the new one right here. Okay, and then we can calculate the number of neutrons, again, from subtracting this mass number from the atomic number. So we get 16 minus 8, and that equals 8 neutrons for this um, particular isotope. isotope of oxygen, which, if you look at the periodic table, it's 15.99, we would be rounding up, so this one actually is our most abundant isotope. Okay, why don't you go ahead and finish these three, and uh, make sure you know how to do these. If you have any questions, make sure you ask us in class. All right, and the last part of this video is about calculating the atomic mass. And so this is where we really find um, what an isotope is. This is how they find it. We have machines that actually do this for us. I mean, we obviously can't go through and count neutrons and protons. And so there's a machine that you can put a sample in, in between two big hockey pucks. They kind of look like clear hockey pucks. Slide them into the machine, and they will give us a readout of these numbers that we're going to learn how to calculate today. So uh, the numbers that you need are the isotope, the atomic mass of all the isotopes known. Yep. Okay, so it might be two, it might be seven. I think the one on the formative assessment has like eight or nine. Yeah. Okay, they have a lot. And we times it by this percent of the abundance, which is the decimal, which is literally how much there is. How much there is. How out much of the sample. Out of the sample. So we do this for all of our um, isotopes, and then we add up the number, and the sum of it is the average atomic mass. And this is literally what is put on the periodic table. Mm -hmm. So every so many years, they redo the periodic table, probably every year. And they change a lot of the mass numbers. So you might have an older periodic table than the one in the room or a different one, and it might have a different atomic mass because they're constantly recalculating them uh, when they find new yeah. elements. Okay, so let's do an example for you. All right, percent example or uh, percent abundance example problem. Little bit of that. All right, so if we have element X, which has two natural isotopes, isotope with a mass of 10.012. Has an abundance of 19.91%. And then isotope number two has a mass of 11.009 KMU. And its relative abundance is 80.11.009. Nine. Nine? Yep. And AMU just stands for, that's the unit for the mass. mass. Yep. And what was his abundance? Uh, 80.09%. 80 80.09%. Just calculate the average atomic mass. So what we're going to start off by doing is we're going to go ahead and we have our um, our mass. Okay, we have our mass for our first one. But we can never use the decim or the percent part. We'd have to take it out of the percent, so you would just divide by 100. So yep. move the decimal two spots to the left. Okay, so we have 0. So point. Nine, nine, one, and then we're going to add that to. Oh, I guess we could add this. We're going to add it in this one. Times this one, which we move the decimal over, or you times it by 100. Take it out of decimal form. Okay, 
And so 10 times this, you multiply them, is 2.03082. And if you multiply these two, we get 8.817. One one zero eight. Now remember, sig fig sign not still applies. Yeah. Okay, so we don't lose that. And then all you do to these numbers, however many there are, there could be three, four, five, six, seven. You might have a whole list of these. But in this case, there's only two known elements. So we add these together. We get ten point eight four seven nine two eight. And so for these two according to the amount that there is, mm -hmm. the most abundant is 10.8. Looks like we need five uh, sig figs for the mass. And so this nine is going to round up our seven, so we get 10.848. For our element x, that would be the average for element x. And so if we were going to literally put it on the periodic table, this was element x. Um, Right, so we look up at our oh, periodic no, table. No, not in the middle. Oh, boron. boron and carbon. Yeah, so this is right around boron. So probably, if we were going to make a prediction, if we were in a lab and we just got these numbers read out to us, and this is what it said, we would say that element X was boron. And we got that from comparing the uh, masses of each one. This to the periodic table. All right, we'll be practicing this um, in class, and if you have any questions, um, make sure you write them down, and we will talk about it in class. Thanks.